Yeah, it was my first time on the on the CBR, and uh, you know I have a lot of work to do to adjust to different things. The day went very quick. We start the job, and uh, we see where we need to improve more, and let's keep going. It's still pretty early days. Yeah, it's my first time on production bike and a different motorcycle, but truthfully, it's still just a motorcycle. I mean, the, yeah, the forks, the suspension's a little different, the tires are different, the brakes, the engine, but I mean, you know, got to remember not come crazy thinking of this or that. It is a bike and have to ride it and was able to start getting closer to field and limit. And, you know, the faster you go, the, the more fun it is. I met the team this week in 10K at the workshop. So it was nice to already know some faces and know some names. And of course, as, as much as you have to learn the bike, it's very important to learn the team, especially your, uh, your crew chief and your data people and your suspension guys. So it's also a new bike for my crew chief. So he has a big job to learn the rider and learn the bike, but it's all part of the process. Well, I, I don't necessarily have a, a set number, but for sure I want to be, uh, you know, as competitive as possible. We know these days are going to go fast. Luckily, we were here at Aragon, a track I already knew, so I could get straight to work on, on making laps with the bike and the team and not out there having to learn a new track, so that was convenient. Truthfully, I'm looking forward to some of the changes. I mean, you know, I, change is fun. I'm going to some new tracks for the first time, some new countries to race, so, uh, you know, New is not always bad. It's also exciting and motivating. Yeah, a new chapter to my career, but really, like I said, it's a similar approach. It's racing motorcycles, so I want to try to try to enjoy it. That's always nice, and if I'm fast enough, I'm sure it'll be fun, but I need to fit in with the team and learn to work with everybody, how to get my what I feel on the bike across to them so they can help me and, uh, you know, hopefully battling on track at, uh, at the front. Nikki Hayden was the last person to win a World Superbike race on a Honda CBR 1000 R. That victory on May 15, 2016 in the pouring rain at the Sepang International Circuit in Malaysia highlighted the Kentuckian's smooth riding style as well as a forgiving nature of the CBR RR platform. At that later trait remains true today. It's the standard issue CBR 1000 RR more powerful or faster than the other Japanese leader class sport bikes. No, but it is velvety smooth with a seat plush enough to be considered comfortable and light effort handling that makes the Honda one of the easiest replica racers in the big bore segment to hustle along a twisty road in a way that screams, I'm not just fast, I'm in control. Before we go any further, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel and put in the comments, I subscribe. We appreciate it. The CBR 1000 RR is still a rocking good time. The 998cc liquid-cooled inline four-cylinder superbike introduced by Honda in 2004 as the seventh generation of the CBR series of motorcycles gets incredibly positive reviews from the motorcycle industry leading critics. Most agree the verdict is the 2019 CBR 1000 RR is beautifully finished open class board bike that instills confidence in its rider, which is great for the street. Lengthy commutes in the saddle of a clip-on handlebar equipped racer replica, is that comfortable? You bet. The riding position, seat comfort, and engine smoothness made a two-hour freeway ride perfectly tolerable, says Cycle World Editor-in-Chief Mark Hoyer, after riding the CBR 1000 RR in both street and track. He went on to say, this is definitely my all-day sport bike for sure. So what is it like firing it up, soul storing the deep vroom from the exhaust while it tells you it's ready to ride? Setting the electronics is easy as a flick of the finger, given there are three preset modes and two user-customizable modes. From left to right, there's P for power, one highest, five lowest, T for traction control, one the least intervention, and eight the most, W for wheelie control, one for the highest intervention, and three for the least, and EB for engine braking, which is one that is the least and three is the highest. One look and you know how the bike will respond. The suspension on the CBR 1000 RR is still some of the most competent on the street as opposed to all the other superbikes in its class. Honda focused on making sure the suspension is tuned for street. That being said, it doesn't mean that the bike is slow. The CBR 1000 RR will own everything thrown against it because it's so easy to ride. While you need more effort on other bikes, the CBR took all steering efforts in its stride. 
So basically, if you can think it, you can turn it. In corners, the softer suspension settings let the tires bite into the road surface and hook up early just as you add balancing throttle. The confidence goads you into opening the gas sooner without the risk of pushing the bike wide. But it isn't all about aggression. Feel the need to cruise? Just raise your body, switch to mode 3, and put along in 6th gear. The bike will happily oblige even when ridden at 50 miles an hour in 6th gear. Not only will it stutter, but the machine will pull hard as soon as you crack the throttle. From there it would blow through 180 miles per hour in a split second. The inline 4 has gobs of low down and mid range torque, unlike its contemporaries. It's punched hard from the standing start and acceleration only slowed down a little past 8,000 RPM. You see, hard acceleration is accompanied by a mix of whoosh from the intake with a howling exhaust as if it were a small V4. The stock exhaust is loud enough, which is all the better for such a distinctive tone that's totally different from all the other inline 4 superbikes. This bike still isn't about aggression. It's about balance and control, making this superbike easy to ride, making this superbike easy to ride even in heavy traffic, which is always a daunting task for most sport bikes. The CBR1000RR is nimble and can weave and turn like you were riding a CBR300R. Plus, carrying a passenger won't be much of a bother either. You see, there's a central theme to the Honda CBR1000RR. The superbike is about total control, and the CBR1000RR team wants to give their rider complete control. You see, total control breeds confidence and confidence turns to enjoyment. Total control means that the bike is more forgiving than many of its peers. Honda's obsession with the little details also go a long way. The design of the fuel tank makes it easy to hook your upper arms and knees when you're leaning into a corner. The seat height is a comfortable level and the footrests are high enough so your pegs won't scrape in a curve. Honda is also obsessed with quality and finish. Look down in the space between the TFT screen and the handlebar and what you're going to see is a clutch click cable. No wayward cables and parts, even the steering dampeners hidden away under the tank cover. Now some haters will bash the lack of a quick shifter, as some riders have forgotten or never learned how to shift gears, but in truth, you're not going to miss it. The first two gears and downshifting may require the clutch lever, but hooking up in the next gears without the clutch was almost as good as using a quick shifter. It felt more rewarding too. The clutch pull is very light, requiring only a finger to work it. You also may hear diehard squids complain about a lack of top end power on the CBR1000RR which has the lowest in its class at 189 horsepower. But unless you want to race the bike in MSBK, why would that bother you at all? What's more important, going stupid fast or the bike's ability to accelerate faster from idle? The enthusiast who rides a CBR1000RR is concerned with rideability and control. Let's also not forget that the bike looks great no matter what angle you're looking at. It's apparent that the Honda CBR1000RR is designed to do almost everything as a sport bike. By that we mean you can ride it every day while carrying a Mr. or Mrs. on the back, head into the hills or weekends or convoy with friends, still be able to turn and burn on the track. And it's surprisingly cheap in relation to other 1000cc sport bikes. We have a couple of 2019 CBR1000RRs available right now for 14 k that's $2500 off retail. So if you choose one super bike, choose the Honda CBR1000RR, use it for all your riding needs. You can call or text us now to make this your next motorcycle. 281-392-8852. On behalf of Wild West Motorplex in Katy, Texas, I'm Watts. Thanks for watching and try clicking the next video. See what else you can discover.